Hello students from the Artifacts and Archaeology module. Here is a screencast on how to improve your drawings in Adobe Photoshop. So firstly, you will hopefully have scanned in your illustrations on a flatbed scanner at 600 pixels per inch. You may have done it in colour, you may have done it in grayscale. Avoid doing it in just black and white because I think it will scan this as a bitmap and it will give you fewer editing opportunities. So here's one I scanned in earlier. It's a paged up, um, let's say it's an A4 sheet of A4 white paper and I've cut out some illustrations which um, were all over the place and I've stuck them down neatly. Uh, you may want to do this yourself, it will save time on the computer. Um, if you haven't done it, don't worry about it because you can crop each one individually in Photoshop and save them as a separate file. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, just so that you can see how you can do that, but also um, you'll be able to move them around on the page in Adobe Illustrator. There's another tutorial um, which you should watch after this one when you're learning how to use the Adobe Illustrator template that I made for you. Before I go on, I must apologise for the Sun Studios effects on this audio. I don't really know how to get rid of it at the moment, so hopefully it's not too an annoying. I'm using Adobe Photoshop CS6. If you're using the um, computers in the Allen Lab, you'll find that Adobe Photoshop Elements is available. Now that has everything you need on it to do this task, but it may look a bit different, and some of the paths that I'm showing you are slightly different, I'm afraid, so um, you may have to fish around a little bit amongst these command lines up here. Feel free to pause this one if you like. Um, perhaps you'd like to do it in conjunction, watch this in conjunction with doing your own work. Okay, so you can see that it, firstly it needs rotating, so I'm going to go to image and image rotation 90 degrees clockwise send it around the right way. And the other thing to look at is see how the paper is looking grey and I've got colour in here and I don't want colour. So firstly I'm going to change the mode from colour to grayscale. Discard all colour. What I want to do now is to remove the grey of the paper and any light smudges or anything that I'll I don't want it. I can achieve this by adjusting the lighting effects. In a Photoshop Elements, it's something like Adjust and Lighting. But in Photoshop CS6, it's Image, Adjust and Levels. What I really need to do first, though, is zoom in on an area that's quite either quite dense or quite sparse, or pick an area that's both. And I can do. I need to cancel what I'm doing there, so I can now go to magnifying glass tool here and click, click and drag a window and just look at an area that's quite detailed so I can make sure I don't lose any of the detail that I want to keep. Okay so image adjustments and levels and I think for you as I said before it's a different path in, in Photoshop elements. I think it's under adjustments, um, adjust lighting and then it's the same as levels so we won't adjusting. I choose levels rather than contrast because you can um, do a little bit more in levels. We're given a histogram here and this peak is the greyness of the paper. So what I can do is slide the right hand slider to the left just beyond this peak. That gets rid of the, as you can see, it's getting rid of the grey of the paper. But we don't want to go so far as we lose detail from the pens. So I'll go back a little bit, maybe to there. And then I take the central slider and I move that to the right. And you can see things are blocking in here. So I'm now going to take it back to the left a little bit. Move this one again to the left. Now move this one to the right. And now I've just got black pixels and white pixels. I've got no grey in between and that's what I want to have. It. Then I click on, on OK. You can see some nasty little blips here and there, which are just bits of dirt or, or bits of ink on the page, and we can get rid of those. I'm going to zoom out now. Um, here's a little shortcut for you. Press Ctrl and 0 simultaneously, and it shows you the whole page. Now, here's the eraser tool. 
I can remove with the eraser tool uh, things that I don't want. There are several modes in eraser. There's a block which looks like this and there is a brush which you can change the size of by the slider here. See that, that eraser is far too big now. Oops, I accidentally erased some of my drawing. Luckily though I can do a control Z which is the la undoing the last thing I did or I can go to the history palette to get any of your palettes up, you go to Window, and then here are all the palettes that are available to you. The History palette is like going back in time in all the steps that you've done since you opened the file. But I think it has a limit, so it only shows you the last sort of 20 steps. So, um, because I undid that, if I do Control z again, it's like Redo. So now you can see in the History palette, here's the eraser. I can click back to the last thing I did before the eraser, and then the erasing that I erroneously did has gone away. So my eraser's too big, I'm going to make it smaller. Um, about that big, that's good. So I'm just getting rid of little smudges and dirt on the page by clicking the eraser tool. Here's what the block eraser looks like. So if you erase things at this sort of zoom level, you can see the big errors that are going to show up on the page. Um, if I now zoom in, you can see more detail. Uh, here's some things, little marks which may not even show up actually in printed, but let's be sure they're not going to by taking them away. Now what I'm doing here is I'm panning around at this zoom level by pressing the space bar down on the keyboard and holding it and when I release it, it goes back to the last tool, um, the eraser tool, the last tool that I was using. So hold down the space bar, move around the drawing at this sort of zoom level and you don't have to keep finding your way by going like this, control zero and then going like this, zoom in, click, click, click. So erase it all again, pan around the page. There's a little blip, there's a little blip, there's some more. If you've got a large area that you want to remove, you can get the lasso tool. There's a couple of different kinds, but the one at the top is a, just a click and a drag with your mouse button depressed. That's selected that area. If I now press delete it gets rid of everything in that area but first it asks what I want to fill that hole with. The foreground colour is this black here so I want to fill it with white which is the background colour. Say OK. There you go. To deselect something press Ctrl and D on the keyboard. Pan around holding the space bar down. Draw an area with the lasso, press delete on the keyboard, fill it with black background colour, control D to deselect. So you might think that's a bit quicker than using the eraser tool. Press delete and it defaults to the last thing you did. Okay, so now um, I'm going to show you how to rotate so we've already rotated 90 degrees clockwise. Um, you might want to make sure you're, well you will want to make sure your drawing is perfectly perpendicular. Here are some rulers in Photoshop. I can click above the ruler area. By the way, if you can't see the rulers, go to View and click on the rulers there. So once you've generated them, click inside the ruler area, drag down a guideline, holding the mouse down, and you can see that these little paste out marks that are on this illustration, they match up. So I don't need to rotate this. But I want to show you how to rotate something. So I'm just going to um, rotate it so that it's wrong. So that I can then correct it and show you how to correct. So if I just go like that, that's the ruler tool. And I clicked and dragged it across and now if I go to image and image rotation and then arbitrary, it measures the angle that this um, line is at 
and therefore it's not arbitrary, is it? But anyway, 7.49 degrees, say OK, and now I've made my illustration go wonky. So, how do we straighten it out? Let's choose something that, I, that we know we want to be perpendicular to the page. So I'm going to click and drag out a vertical guideline. And I'm matching up to the top of this brooch. Now I'm guessing the ruler tool. I'm clicking at the top of the line and I'm following the line of the brooch. And that line is what I want to be perpendicular. So it's going to measure the distance between the line I just drew and the guide. So go to uh, image, image rotation, arbitrary. 7.2 is the angle between this line and the guide. Say OK. And there you go. It's straight. So this page has been pasted up in advance, but you can actually just use Adobe Illustrator, which is on the next video, to place individual um, fine drawings onto a, a virtual page in Adobe Illustrator. So the way to do that then, if you've got a, draw, a page full of drawings or you just want to cut out, crop out one area of the page, you can go to the, um, let's use the polygonal lasso tool there. So um, with the polygonal lasso tool, you can click and click and click and release and draw around the thing that you want to make into an individual file. So I've got a selection here. Now a shortcut, which is the same I think in Word and lots of other programs, is Control C for copy. I want to now make a new file. So I press Control N and that makes a new file and it defaults to the size of what I've just copied. And it's the same resolution as the stuff I'm just copying over. So here's my new file. Control V, paste it in. There you go. Um, here's the la layers palette. It pastes it in and it calls it layer one. So the last thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to crop this a bit tighter here and bring that down a bit there. Press enter. And lastly, I'm going to convert this from grayscale, which it currently is, into bitmap mode by just going to image mode and bitmap. Flatten layers, yes and it asks me if I still want it to be at the same resolution, which is 600 pixels per inch, which I do. So what bitmap does is it removes all the white pixels and all you're left with is black pixels and nothing. So if I just zoom in, I'm doing a cheeky little um, keyboard zoom there by pressing control and space and holding those down with my left hand and clicking with my right hand on the mouse. Um, look at the pixels, they're all jaggedy and it looks pretty nasty, doesn't it? But don't fear, because when you look at it at the scale you're going to print it at, it will look beautiful. But I can actually, at this scale, see some stuff I still need to erase. And I'm going to do that, so let's just get rid of these with the eraser tool. Or get the lasso tool and just drag the mouse around. Lasso that dirty stuff, press delete. Press Ctrl D to deselect. So I can also go back to the polygonal lasso tool. I've got some unfortunate little bits around the edge here. And I can tidy that line up by clicking along the edge of the line. To close the polygon, you hover over the first point that you clicked on, then release, and then press delete. And to deselect, press Ctrl D on the keyboard. I hope I'm not going too fast, but it is Friday afternoon and I want to go to the pub. So, um, if you get confused, just watch it again and just pause it. Um, I'm using the eraser tool again, without even telling you that I'm doing it, but you can see that. Don't forget, if you press the space bar and hold it, you can pan around the drawing, rather than keeping on zooming in and out. And that is about that. Now that drawing is as good as it's going to get. It's nice and crisp. I haven't lost any detail when I did my levels adjustments. Um, here's a letter setted number that I did earlier, but I would advise that you type yours in in Adobe Illustrator or Word, if you're going to use Word, to paste them up instead. Okay, Control-Zero. 
allows you to view the whole page. That's a nice shortcut on the keyboard as well. So that is that. Then save it. Control, Shift and S is the shortcut for that. But you can just go to File and Save As and name it something sensible. Um, this is number one, so I'm going to call it number one. And don't worry about all this, just say OK. And then close the file. And then you can do the next one. So here we go. Polygonal lasso tool, draw around your object. And now Control C to copy, Control N for new, Control V to paste, etc. And I think that's about that. What else do I need to tell you regarding Photoshop? Um, don't forget to save your file. Save it onto your N drive if you, if you like, because bitmap files are small file sizes. If you keep it in the grayscale mode at 600 pixels per inch, it's going to be quite a few megabytes and it'll fill up your space on your N drive. Alternatively, you might want to use a little data stick or anything, but anyway, that's that. So, hope it goes well. Good luck and goodbye.